Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Welcome to this first introductory video in a series of videos that we're planning to do on uh, Amazon Web Services. That would be Amazon AWS. Um, this is a production of uh, Computer Science R&D Unit, which you can visit at www.csrdu.org, and you can find many more videos, hopefully in the future, and uh, some other tutorials regarding different computer science technologies and tools. So about this first video we're going to talk about uh, what Amazon Web Services are available and uh, we'll talk about uh, what these different web services can do for you. And it's necessary that we do this because Amazon is offering okay, let's get that. Amazon is offering a lot of different web services for specialized needs of developers and system administrators and for a newbie they can be really confusing what uh, they do and uh, whether you need them or not so first off uh, you need to go to aws.amazon.com and uh, click on products to get to this page and uh, here you can see compute content delivery database e-commerce these services are all arranged into different categories so let's begin by discussing each of these in turn so EC2 is the um, first of this hodgepodge of web services and uh, it's basically elastic because it can uh, increase the services that it provides and uh, it's a computing cloud first of it's in the cloud so you don't have to manage your servers and uh, it provides computation capabilities so it's basically a VM that runs in the cloud and the elastic portion is important because the services or the resources provided to your VM or your Amazon machine image that is running on this EC2 platform, it can be given more resources as um, its resource use utilization increases or if you get more traffic, you can have more bandwidth allocated to it and we'll come to this point uh, in about two or three minutes. Uh, Elastic MapReduce is basically uh, Amazon running the Apache Hadoop uh, implementation of MapReduce and uh, that's basically all you need to know. If you don't know what MapReduce is, go and study uh, Apache Hadoop, hadoop.apache.org and you can come back here and study this in detail. Autoscaling is the uh, Amazon way of allowing you to provide more resources to your EC2 instances as more and more traffic comes to it or if they want more resources this is in runtime and within minutes Amazon uh, EC2 platform can provide more uh, resources to an AMI if it uh, requires them and for that you basically need this monitoring service Amazon CloudWatch so what CloudWatch does is it monitors the EC2 running instances and lets you see what resources are being used by each instance and uh, uh, provides matrix which can be used by different uh, other services such as auto scaling. So these matrix can be used as constraints which can be used to define other uh, policies for resource allocation throughout these AWS platform uh, services. So uh, coming back to this content delivery, Amazon Cloudfront, CloudFront sorry, is uh, basically a content delivery system it allows you to move your content within the Amazon network from its source wherever it's sitting in its storage space to a server which is closest to the target computer that the content has to be delivered to so if you're sitting in um, Argentina and your servers are sitting in somewhere in Japan and uh, your content needs to be moved to Argentina so the whole content will move through this cloud front to a server that would be nearer to Argentina, for example, the US. And from there, it will de be delivered to the target platform. And it's really cool because the content gets moved within this cloud front platform in Amazon's high speed network. So you get better uh, delivery of this content. And again, it's digital content. If you're talking about uh, physical uh, goods and uh, other stuff that's coming in the future. 
So databases, you have two type of types of uh, databases in uh, this AWS platform. You have the simple DB, which is basically a non-relational database, which allows you to basically uh, query your uh, storage space, which would be this Amazon S3 simple storage service. We'll be coming back to this in a while. And the other type of database is the Amazon relational database service, which is very similar to MySQL and uh, you can use or import your MySQL uh, databases into this RDS and use your database in the cloud with all the elastic resource allocation, etc. etc. Now, Amazon Fulfillment Web Service or FWS is the uh, basically content delivery system or the uh, physical good delivery system, and you can also call it the shipment system. What happens is if you want to use FWS, your customers sign up for something or they pay for pay you for something you send your goods that they've ordered to amazon fws uh, inventory system and from there they get shipped through amazon's uh, reliable supposedly um, system to your uh, customers so you don't have to worry about shipment so that's kind of neat messaging you have the simple qt service which can be used to um, basically send um, queued messages among different Amazon Web Service applications or other types of applications and it's good because they're reliable, you don't have to worry about uh, availability of your uh, messaging servers, etc, etc. Simple notification service is kind of a push uh, server which can send emails and uh, other types of notifications, other uh, many types of notifications to your uh, target platforms. Again, I'm not very comfortable with these two, so we'll be coming back to these hopefully sometime in the future. Now, we talked about CloudWatch, which is the monitoring platform. You have the virtual private cloud, which is basically a VPN um, for the cloud. You can have your own company's uh, cloud kept private, but on Amazon's resources. You have Elastic Load Balancing, which is a load balancer, which again takes uh, matrix from CloudWatch and allocates different resources to your um, Amazon machine instances, uh, images, sorry. Um, you have two types of uh, payments and billing systems in AWS. You have the flexible payments service, which is kind of like PayPal. You can use Amazon's architecture to um, pay for different services and to receive payments. Amazon DevPay is a little more specialized. It basically allows you to specify payment methods uh, for uh, applications or resources running on top of the AWS itself. For example, you might have written an Amazon machine instance, Amazon machine, machine image, sorry which runs on top of this EC2 and you want to sell that and you want to provide constraints that um, you want per hour billing, you want per month billing, stuff like that. So you can use DevPay to define all these constraints and uh, work on that. Amazon Simple Storage Service, that would be the um, S3, the popular one and it basically allows you to store objects into buckets which sit on top of the Amazon's uh, cloud platform. So you can have a bucket called my bucket and you can access that as my bucket dot AWS, uh, sorry, my bucket dot Amazon AWS dot com and slash whatever your object name is. Very useful. Hopefully uh, we'll be coming back to a uh, programming uh, view of this S3 in the future videos. Elastic Block Storage is uh, again a storage system for block devices and you can use it for uh, as uh, block devices in your applications running on top of AWS or desktop applications. And you have AWS import export of, I don't know what that is, but probably importing exporting services and storing them on S3. A lot of these things get stored in S3. For example, your AMIs, which you use in EC2, are stored in S3. So that is the basic storage unit um, or storage space for uh, Amazon services. And all the rest is kind of um, support for which you have to pay. And you have web traffic analysis, and you have this Amazon Mechanical Turk, which is kind of useless. Um, I don't really get what this does. Fairly useless. Look it up if you want. Uh, but it's kind of artificial artificial intelligence that's what they call it and let's not waste time on that so that's the overview of this whole uh, myriad of products offered by AWS and uh, next video hopefully in a day will be on EC2 and how to create your Amazon machine images and run them securely 
So thanks for watching and listening and uh, subscribe to our channel for more videos.